vultures blending as we Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We pray together. Gracious God, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 33 is a psalm that recognizes that God alone is ruler of the nations, that God alone can save. And it's probably written at a time when the people have been feeling God's judgment, when they feel that they as a nation have turned away from the Lord. And so this is an invitation to turn back. And Ty's going to lead and you respond. Sing joyfully to the Lord. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord with, with music. music. Sing to God a new song. Sing with skill and joy. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the people God chose for an inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all humanity. From the Lord's dwelling place God watches all who live on earth. No nation is saved by the size of an army. Despite all its great strength it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear God. And those whose hope is in God's unfailing love. In God, our hearts rejoice. For, For we, we trust, trust in the holy name of the Lord. May God's unfailing love rest upon us. For we put our hope in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 16th verse. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. This chapter starts out with the arrest of John the Baptist, with John questioning whether Jesus was the Messiah, and then with Jesus, uh, you could say, being kind of disappointed or frustrated with this generation of people. And then it ends with these beautiful words of comfort. Jesus said, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, 
and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, O Christ. Christ. Let's sing for the boys and girls who are online, and Kayla's here, and she's going to help me this morning. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Good morning. To, today I want to think about the burdens that we sometimes have to carry in life and how they kind of weigh us down. So sometimes we Sometimes we feel that, and sometimes um, we think we can do it. But there are burdens. Sometimes that burden is sadness. Maybe it's sadness, you know, right now that we can't play with our friends anytime we want to. Um, sadness that the school year finished in such a strange way. Um, maybe it's a, a burden of uh, sickness because... We know plenty of people are sick with this virus and plenty of people are sick with other things. Maybe it's a burden of feeling like you haven't been treated fairly. There are many people in the world who are not and who feel it. Uh, maybe, maybe the burden is worry for what's going to happen. What's going to happen with the world God has made? What's going to happen with God's creatures? Um, what's gonna happen with us when we, we grow up and when we grow older? And those things can really weigh us down. Um, Kayla, how heavy is your thing? You think you can, you think you can? Oh boy, oh boy. That's a pretty heavy burden, isn't it? Um, would you like a little help with it? Can we have some help? It's good to have a big brother, isn't it? Now, you, t you take one side, Jake, take the other. Is that better? Take it away. Jesus says, come to me, you who are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And Jesus doesn't say he'll take away all the burdens, but I think Jesus promises to help us carry them helps us deal with them, helps us work through those things that scare us or that make us sad or that are hurting people. Um, Jesus is willing to help us carry those burdens. Thank you, Kayla. Give Kayla a hand for helping out. Grace to you and peace from Jesus who invites us to come and learn from him and to find rest for our souls. Amen. Is anyone here weary of something? Uh, may, maybe I should ask that differently. Can anyone here say they are not weary of this virus or of constant culture wars 
or of systems where some people thrive and others are just surviving? Aren't we all weary? There are precious and lovely words for us uh, waiting at the end of Jesus of this gospel reading where Jesus promises to give us rest. And so that we don't just pluck those, those nice verses out of context, let's, no, let's notice what else is going on in today's gospel reading. Since the words of Jesus were, were part of a story and not just words of comfort alone. So there's always a tension in the four Gospels between the person of Jesus and the ways of the world. Now, sometimes we hear the crowds and even the leaders responding favorably to Jesus. So it is isn't constant tension. We see him befriending a tax collector and a leader of the synagogue and coming to the rescue of a woman caught in adultery. Uh, that's a, a wide spectrum of people whom Jesus appeals to. But at other times, the religious leaders and Jesus are in each other's faces and at each other's throats. The idea that God so loved the world that he sent his only son does not make the story of the gospel unfold in, in just a, a nice, smooth way. In chapter 11 of, of Matthew... John the Baptist, who has paved the way for Jesus, has been put in prison. John sends disciples to, to help him know whether Jesus is really the Messiah whom, whom all good Jews were longing for, because it seemed like he was, except for when it seemed like he might not be. The, the, the questions of John become the questions of the crowd. Uh, the critics of John become the critics of Jesus. And Jesus basically shakes his head about that, that generation of folks who have the truth present right in front of their noses, but yet can't see it. He compares them to like, like children who sometimes get into tiffs with their playmates, as in, oh, the boys want to do a, a wedding song and dance, and the girls want to do a funeral dirge, and so nobody gives space for the other, and so nobody gets to dance or sing, and everybody's put off. Jesus is critical for how he and John have been judged by their appearances. John, for looking and acting like a misfit prophet whom nobody really wanted to cozy up to, and then these same folks accused Jesus of being a, a what? A glutton and a drunkard because he did the social thing of welcoming people and eating and drinking with them for who they were and for who they might become. And so he's criticized for the company he keeps. And you can see and hear prejudice at work creating that tension, right? People who had no reason to do so thought that they could stereotype John and keep him out of their lives. And they didn't listen to John's message. And now they're trying to put Jesus in a box and deciding against him too. And they think they're so, so right in doing that. How many times have, have we been misunderstood, judged prematurely uh, by what people see of us on the surface? or what people think they know about us from, from our origins or from who we hang out with. And how often have we shortchanged someone else by assuming that they're part of a group who doesn't share our values, or they don't seem to fit in with how we think people ought to live or, or work or what have you. It's, it's disheartening and it works both ways. That's the danger of stereotypes and that's the meaning of the word prejudice, which literally means to prejudge someone rather than to actually take the time to get to know this person or to allow a person to be known for who they are and not for some category that it's so easy to place them into. The people Jesus is describing are hurting and, and they're angry and they don't seem to know that their hurt won't go away until their anger does. 
Have you noticed there's a lot of hurting and angry people in our nation right now? And given what we know about humans in general, that's, that's really nothing new. It's just that right now, it's in, it's in front of our eyes, making it hard for us to ignore. And, and I'm not suggesting that anger is never an appropriate way for people who have been hurt by unjust systems to express their frustration or to call for change. Uh, sometimes it's, it may be the necessary thing to do. Uh, Jesus demonstrated righteous anger on a number of occasions. What he always did, though, is what he is doing in today's gospel reading. He's showing the heart of God to those who are hurting and to those who are angry. You might have some reasons to be hurting and angry at the state of things right now. Uh, I'm not particularly happy with how things are going, and there are things that are breaking my heart and messing with my mind. Uh, some of our sisters and brothers probably have a greater right to be hurting and angry right now. So, so let's come back to these words that all of us need to hear from the heart of Jesus. Come to me, Jesus says, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me. That's an invitation and it's a summons. We're invited to come to Jesus, uh, to come away from the pundits whose mission in life is to divide and, and to, to not just stick with our own kind and our own echo chamber that's so well sealed that, that no other versions of the truth can get in or out. We're summoned to learn from Jesus, who has a heart for people on every side of the spectrum. We're invited to bring our heavy burdens to him, remembering that hurts and anger and prejudice and fear are all heavy burdens. And when we come to Jesus, he will teach us. He'll teach us what it means to find rest in a time of restlessness and what it means to make peace in a time of conflict and what it means to take care of each other when, when so many are not feeling cared for, and even how to take care of ourselves when our hearts are breaking and our nights are restless. As we note, every time we talk about discipleship, Jesus is not inviting us to a life of ease and comfort, and he's not suggesting that life can just be carefree, and he's not either even promising a life of safety but he's offering a way that gives life, a way of life that has us use our, our hearts at least as much as our heads, and a way of life that might lift up gentleness and humility as qualities to be desired and as fruits to be grown and shared. It seems there's way too many things swirling around us out of control right now, things that are making us weary things that make some of our neighbors even more weary. And in the midst of this, we, we listen for the voice that says, come to me, learn from me, follow me, and you will find rest for your souls. That's the voice we want to listen to and follow this week. Amen. Ty and Jake have a little uh, duet for us, and then we're going to sing um, just the first verse of Oh Beautiful.
by your cross and resurrection, deliver us. By your witness to the truth, deliver us. By your passion and death, deliver us. By your victory over the grave, deliver us. From the lust of power, deliver us. From the conspiracy of silence, deliver us. From the worship of weapons, deliver us. From the slaughter of innocents, deliver, deliver us. us. From the nightmare of hunger, deliver, deliver us. From the peace that is no peace, deliver us. From the security that is no security, deliver us. From the politics of terror, deliver us. From the plundering of the earth's resources, deliver us. From the dispossession of the poor, deliver us. From the despair of this age, deliver us. By the light of the gospel, give, give us peace. peace. By the good news for the poor, give, give us peace. By your healing of our wounds, give, give us peace. By faith in your word, give, give us peace. By hunger and thirst for justice, give, give us peace. By the coming of your kingdom, give, give us peace. peace. Amen. Prayers for the 4th of July weekend were, were written by John Vest, and I don't know what year they were written, but they're very timely for us today. Let us pray. Gracious God of love, we are grateful that you have revealed yourself to us, each of us loved by you as children, each of us precious in your sight, each of us a reflection of you each of us bound together by love, which is in fact your presence among us. We come to you, O God, weary and carrying heavy burdens. Some of us bear the yoke of illness. Some of us bear the yoke of loss and grief. Some of us bear the yoke of caring for those who cannot care for themselves. Some of us bear the yoke of unemployment. Some of us bear the yoke of hunger. Some of us bear the yoke of homelessness. Some of us bear the yoke of oppression or marginalization. Some of us bear the yoke of violence. Some of us bear the yoke of anger. Some of us bear the yoke of depression. Some of us bear the yoke of addiction. From these and from so many other yokes, dear God, we pray for rest. We pray for healing. We pray for release. We pray for wholeness. On this holiday weekend, we recognize that our nation also bears many burdens. We don't trust our leaders. We cannot find ways to work together for the common good. We allow the least among us to suffer and languish. We lose our children to endless conflicts and wars. We fixate on what divides us rather than on what brings us together as one people. Remind us this weekend of our calling, remind us of our common creed that all people are created equal. Inspire us to ensure that all your children enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Help us to be profoundly grateful for our freedom and security, to never take these gifts for granted, and to use them for the betterment of all. God of all life, may peace and justice fill our land, and indeed the whole world. We pray this morning for places where 
tensions and violence are escalating in places around the globe where people are victimized, where safety is threatened, where freedoms are denied, where life is treated as anything less than sacred. Gracious God, grant us the yoke of Christ, binding us together, tethered by your love, guided by your presence, bringing your kingdom into this world. It is for your kingdom and your will that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share that peace. You can flash a peace sign out the window or toot your horn. Peace be with you. And uh, Paul and Pam will gather offerings if you have them. Thank you. Some of you have been uh, mailing them in or giving online. That's wonderful. And uh, Ty and Jake have some special music to share again. be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift, we lift them, them up to the, lord. the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it, it is, is right, right to, to give, give god thanks and praise our lord jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The communion cups have a little a little clear seal to get you to the wafer and then the foil seal gets you to the grape juice the body and blood of christ given and shed for you thank you the 
body and blood of Christ given you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ will strengthen us and keep us in His grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace, for you are our Lord forevermore. Amen. Amen. May God, whose power working within us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Now join in the sending song, and then Ty's going to sing a postlude for us.
sends us forth to serve. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. with fall. 